Jordan, you will need uh, a GitHub account for this part of the tutorial, as well as basically all the remaining parts of the tutorial. Uh, if you don't have one, it should take you know, a minute or two to, to create real quick. And second, if you don't have the Wi-Fi set up on your laptop and you want to follow along with the interactive examples, I would encourage you to get that set up right now. I can come around and help folks do that uh, while Jason's talking if needed, but uh, otherwise I'm gonna turn it over to Jason and he's gonna talk about the standard library and getting started with Gem5. So take it away, Jason. Okay, great, thanks, Matt. Um, so first of all, I wanna say sorry that I can't be there. Um, there was all sorts of travel issues um, and it ended up being just like no way to get there uh, so I can present. Um, so uh, here I am uh, presenting virtually instead. Not ideal, but best of some bad situations. Um, okay, so what I'm going to be talking about is getting started with Gem5 first, and then we'll start to talk about the standard library. So in this section, basically what we're going to do is get code spaces going and do our first uh, simulation. Okay. So we're going to talk about how to obtain Gem5, how to build it, and then we're gonna do a simple simulation. Um, yeah, so getting Gem5 and compiling Gem5 is often not the easiest thing to do. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll go through this one at a time. Sorry, apologies, I'm playing with my Zoom. Okay, so here we go. So normally, don't do this, but normally um, what we would do is do git clone of gem5, cd to gem5, and then build it. Um, but we're going to be using code spaces, which has already done this for you, which we'll see in a second. So one quick note on gem5's um, uh, code base. So we use stable as the default branch. So stable is the current release of gem5 which as of yesterday is v24.0. If you're developing on Gem5, as in you want to contribute your changes back to the Gem5 community, we use the develop branch between each release. Um, so develop is where new features are uh, first added and tested, improvements to the code, bug fixes, et cetera, go and develop. And then once every three to six months, we merge develop into stable and have a release. Um, so as I said, we're going to be using code spaces, so you don't need to do this right now, which is what that says. Okay, so we're going to be using the uh, bootcamp environment uh, for this. So step one, go to this link that's on the screen. I'll leave this up for a minute. Um, as you do this, it'll probably take logging into GitHub, maybe logging into GitHub Classrooms, um, and we, you need to do this so that you can be in our GitHub organization, which then allows us to use the free code spaces. So I'll leave this here for a minute. And I'll uh, I'll walk around and help if anybody needs help now. So just uh, just raise your hand if you're having any problems. Matt, if you could let me know when most people seem to have uh, been able to do this. I guess I can also say if you go to the um, ISCA tutorial page on the Gem5 website, it also has a link to this. So just in case you can't see it in the back. So I would say at least a few people need a minute, Jason. Okay. So it looks like maybe all but one or two have it set up, Jason. Does anybody in the room want 
or need another minute to get set up? Nope. All right, go ahead, Jason. Okay, great. So now that you're in the organization, um, so after you join the classroom, go to this page on GitHub, which is also linked um, on the website, and click on code, and then click on this plus sign to create a new code space. You might have to click on the code spaces tab as well. Um, or you might be able to just click on this button down here, create code space on main. Um, so I am going to do that as well. So I'll leave this up for a minute so you can grab that link. Again, it's on gym5.org slash events slash ISCA24 as well. Um, Okay, I'm gonna to go to that as, too. as before, just raise your hand if you're having any issues. I'm I'll circulating around. Okay. So I know it's probably gonna be super tiny, but here, here's the um URL up at the top. Go to code and the plus sign, which will create a code space on main. So as this is coming up, um it should take a minute or so. Um, to load. This has been preloaded with a bunch of pre-built Gen5 binaries, all of our materials. In fact, it also has everything from the boot camp from a couple years ago. Um, it also has uh, the Gen5 repo, Gen5 resources repo, which we'll talk about those, um, and a bunch of written materials as well. It actually builds a website, but we won't be using that. Um, after it loads, it will do some extra stuff in the background, which hopefully you can ignore, um, and then we'll go on from there. It should be, so as this is coming up, just a bit of an FYI. So uh, GitHub Codespaces is a, um, a what they call a dev container. So it's a Docker container, which is running on a Azure virtual machine. Um, and in this case, I think we're using an eight core uh, virtual machine, um, which should make it relatively quick to build Gen5. We're using a pre-built, so it shouldn't take too long to build the code space, but this is taking longer than I expected. So there's at least one person who I'm helping Jason, but I mean, if you want me just to help that one person and keep going, that's fine. But I know also things are loading, so you might want to wait anyways. Yeah, if it's taking this long for me, I'm sure it's taking this long for others. I, I know I'm working with him, but anybody else having problems while I'm getting around? Yeah, everybody's, I think, on the loading screen the same as Jason, so. Okay, great. So yeah, this will come up. Um, and so the README will be shown here. Um, you'll get lots of little pop-ups, which you can exit from. Um, and we'll come back to this uh, in a moment. Um, so I'm gonna go on, Matt, help people if anybody needs it and just stop me if I need to stop and go back to anything. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm, I have one person I'm helping, but I think you can progress. Okay, great. Okay, so we have the code spaces going. So we're going to wait for the environment to load. Once it's loaded, we're done. Um, so normally, we can build Gem 5. Let's not do this um, right now, um, because the code space has pre-built Gem 5 binaries. Um, we'll come back and do this in the afternoon. So don't do this right now, but this is how you would build uh, Gem 5 once you change to the same Gem 5 directory. OK, so what we're going to do is uh, start by writing a really simple configuration and get our first uh, simulation done. So let's open the file that's in the materials directory, 01basic.py. Um, so you'll see these imports are already done for you. And we're going to write a quick um, uh, Python script to configure Gem5. OK. So as we're opening this, so we're in the materials ISCA directory, which I don't think was on the slide. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger for you.
Um, so materials, ISCA 24, uh, 0, 1, basic.py, and then here, here you see what was on the slide. Um, so, yeah, as Matt mentioned at, at the beginning, you know, Gem 5 is controlled by Python. And so what we're going to do is use these um, uh, standard library components, the x86 demo board and the simulator um, to run, to configure Gem 5 and run an example simulation. Um, another thing I'll mention is in this completed directory is all of these scripts that are in their completed form. So if I go too fast, you can always grab um, this stuff from the completed directory. Um, also, actually, I'll just turn this off. Um, let's see if I can, I'll disable GitHub Copilot for now. Um, if you haven't used GitHub Copilot, it's great though. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a board. Um, so we are going to use the x86 demo board um, as our board. So I'll talk about this in a minute, um, but you can think of this kind of like the motherboard in your computer. This is where all the components go. And the x86 demo board is fully populated um, and ready to simulate. This is actually going to do a full system simulation. So then we're going to do board.set workload. So we're going to essentially plug a workload into this board. And in this case, we're going to obtain a resource from Gem5 resources, and we are going to use the x86 Ubuntu 24.04. Um, hey, hey, Jason, just three. for a heads up, um, for a lot of people, it's still loading. I don't know if you want to like give it a minute or what we want to do, but just letting you know. OK. Um, yep, we can pause for a minute. Um, one thing I'll say is make sure you do that code space when you create the code space. Make sure you do it from this um, repository. Do not use the repository that was cloned by the classroom. This repository, the Gem5 ISCA tutorial, um, Gem5 bootcamp environment, this has pre-built containers, so everything loads a lot faster. So yeah, at least for the the folks I'm helping, Jason, they've created the code space like that has a you know a name or whatever, and when they click on it, then it just says connecting. So for whatever reason, it's going much slower here. Okay. Um, Are you seeing a black just to double check, it's in this. Like, like, it will definitely take a really long time if you do it in the other repo, um, but it should be quick in this repo. So Matt, Matt P is gonna look with him while I work on helping someone else. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and finish typing this out um, so we can run the simulation and see what happens, uh, but I will not go further than that until people have caught up. So now that we have a board um, and we've set a workload, we are gonna create a simulator. Um, so we're going to use our simulator object and pass in our board um, to the simulator object. So we're going to simulate this board. And then we are going to do simulator.run. Um, and we're going to run this for some number of ticks. So I want to run it for 20 milliseconds, which is a lot of picoseconds. Um, so this uh, 20 times 10 to the 9 is going to be 20 milliseconds. So we can save that, move to this directory, materials, ISCA. Um, so we're in the directory that has our script in it. And then we can use Gem5 messy. Um, so we have multiple Gem5 binaries in this uh, repo. When I was planning this, I wasn't sure exactly what uh, Gem5 we needed to use. Um, so apologies if there's any confusion. Um, but in this case, we're going to use the version that has messy two-level um, cache protocol in it. Um, so we're going to use the Gem5 messy um, binary, and we're going to run our Python script here. 
So essentially the Gem5 binary is a Python interpreter. So you pass a Python script to the Gem5 binary, it executes it. So it's going to execute the code that we have up here. Um, and then we'll see our simulation. How are things going there, Matt? Um, there's at least a couple people who are still having some problems, at least in one case, I'm trying to look up here a few slides ago because they, the code space says there's no code spaces available. So I'm not sure if they clicked on an incorrect button. I'm trying to. So um, if you go to. Right. This web page, make sure you click join the classroom before you try to create the code space. Okay. So I guess join the classroom before the code space. My guess is they, they didn't do the step one, which I'm hoping your join link there is going to also hand, go to. Yep, that's right. Thanks. Yep. Um, but there was at least one person who's gotten this to work. <laughs> is it? But go ahead. Sorry, I'm listening. So there was at least one person there who has gotten this to work, right? No, I heard you, Jason. I'm checking oh. with the students where they're at. Sorry. Um, so at least for these folks, it looks like um, the getting getting started script is still running. So I think things are just slow. Um, has anybody gotten to the point that Jason's at, or is it loading for everybody? OK, it looks like. Let's say a third of the people are at the same point as you, Jason, and the rest are still loading. Okay. Well, I'm glad there's an existence proof that this works. Uh -huh. Okay. And so now it looks like things are loading for you. So great. Um, and yeah, I mean, like Jason showed you a moment ago, we're just going to have to let it load um, for you too. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go on. Um, because you're really not going to be missing much. And then in the next probably 10 minutes or so, I'll be lecturing anyway. So, um, OK, so we can run this script. Um, and it's going to print a bunch of crap to the screen. Um, so you know, one important thing here is that you know this x86 demo board is really just for demonstration purposes. Don't try to use it in research. Um, so it'll sit here a minute. What it's doing is verifying that the resources that are pre-downloaded are the correct resources. Um, OK, and then we're going to start actually um, running. And it's going to pop up this thing saying port 3456 and also maybe port 7000. Uh, let's ignore this for now. We're just going to run for 20 milliseconds. Um, so this is going to take a minute or two. Um, Still running. And if you want to while this is running, um, you can split and look at um, what is in M5 out. So in the M5 out directory is all the output from M5. And if we look at, I hope this is good. Okay. So this is finished now. So now if we open up um, M5 out board.pc.com underscore one device. So this is the serial port um, from our full system simulation. What you'll see is that the Linux kernel has started booting. Um, and so Gem5 is actually simulating the entire system, the disk, the kernel, um, the serial devices, et cetera. And you can see um, the Linux has started to boot. So other than people still struggling with code spaces, any questions so far? Questions? Have folks gotten to the same point as Jason, like running the board and seeing the output? Yeah. OK, great. OK, and as I said, I think we'll have a few minutes before we have to get back to uh, doing that again. Um, OK. So as I said, we did this x86 demo board. The demo board has a single channel of memory for excuse me, four three gigahertz processors, a two level cache hierarchy, and it runs this full system. 
Um, if you want to see information about where this demo board came from, I'm pretty sure in the code space, you can simply right click on this and say, go to definition and it will take you to it, um, which is in the source Python Gem 5 pre-built demo directory. Um, so we loaded some software onto this. So we did this uh, obtain resource. So obtain resource is gonna download all the files you need. Um, and so in this case, we had to download a disk image, the thing that contains the operating system, and then also the kernel, which is the operating system. And then it sets some default parameters. If you wanna see what this is, you can go to this link on uh, Gem5 resources. Um, and this shows you information about this resource that we used. So in this case, this is a workload, which has pointers to all the other resources that are needed and some configuration information. We'll talk more about uh, Gen5 resources in a bit. Um, okay, so that's what we looked at. Okay, and then we ran the simulation. So we ran it here for 20 milliseconds. And that's it. Uh, this is a typo here. That should be apologies. I'm going to fix that typo before it gets worse. OK. So that's it. So, so we ran this. We saw this output. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit about the output um, that's in m 5 out. So we saw the terminal output, um, which is showing that Gem5 is actually booting Linux. Another thing that's in that out directory is the config.ini and the config.json file. So these two files, um, the ini shown on the left and the json shown on the right, are the same thing in two different formats. And it's a record of what you simulated. So before the simulation starts, Gem5 dumps this information so you know exactly what it was uh, that you simulated. Hey, Jason. A, yep. Sorry, um, so some of them have your basic that P O one basic that P Y and they click the run button and it's returning an error saying, um, no module named gem five. So do so, they need older? No, that's a great question. Let me bring that up. So we probably could do this, but we haven't. So, so, so don't create, click this run button. This Python file, while it is Python, we are using this Gem5 um, module, which is only in the Gem5 binary. So when you run it, you have to run it with the Gem5 binary. So up here at the top, it says run with Gem5 messy 01 dot, uh, basic, uh, 01 basic dot pi. So this Gem5 binary, or Gem5 in general, is a Python interpreter. So Gem5 is a Python interpreter that has some special Gem5 modules in it, which are all the C++ models that Matt was talking about. So instead of running this with Python, you need to run it with um, this Gem5 binary. Yeah, can you hear me, Jason? Yep. Okay, and you want them to run it specifically from the materials ISCA24 folder, right? It doesn't really matter, but that's a good place to do it. It seems like it does because it's, they're getting the generic, like, you know, gem five help print if they don't run it from there. So uh, if you, yeah, so, so the gem five binary is the Python interpreter we're using. And then you need to get the, the full path to the um, yeah. script you're running. So if you're not in the ISCA 24 directory, then you would need to give it the path to that script. That's what it is, okay. So it looks like folks have it running now. So anybody else just show hints that I can help while we're, we're up? All right, go ahead, Jason. Cool. Yeah, and no problem that we're spending some time on this. This is why we did this really simple getting started thing so we can iron out the issues now. And then as we do the more complex things, it'll go faster. Uh, okay, so in the output, we have the terminal device, the config.ini, and then Probably the most important um, thing in the M5 out directory is the stats file. So this is um, all of the statistics from the models in Gem5 that show the um, information about the simulated hardware. So for instance, we set that we were only going to run for 20 milliseconds. 
And so you see the sim seconds here is exactly 20, milli, uh, 20 milliseconds. Um, then like some other information, you know, we executed, what is that, 7 million instructions on this. Um, and then there's some host information, like host seconds, which is how long it actually took to run on the host. And then after this, you'll see this file is very, very large. We have lots and lots of statistics. Um, and we'll look at some of them um, as we go through uh, some other examples. Okay, so that's it uh, for getting started. Now we're gonna jump into the uh, standard library. But before I do that, any other questions or anything uh, so far? So I know there's at least a couple of you that the code space is still loading, but otherwise has everybody, everybody else been able to get to the same point or show of hands if you need any help? Okay. And for those, the two of you who I know it's still loading, um, maybe just skip that first example and we can just start with the second one in your case. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, all these are completed in the completed directory. So if you miss something, you can always just see what's there. 